everybody, everybody, man, I got a heavy weight on the channel today. I mean, this guy right here know everything. Out of Birmingham, Alabama, really kind of the heart of the civil rights movement. This gentleman is a PhD and he gonna tell a little bit of the story because I'm gonna ask him, how you get your PhD? When did you get it? But unbelievable that he agreed to come on strong inspirations where I give it to you strong, no chaser. I, I don't even tell it. I let the people who know tell a story because what I want to do is get it right. I want people to know that, hey, at Strong Inspirations, you're going to come up with some stories you've never heard from the people who know firsthand. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the notifications bell and tell somebody about Strong Inspirations because we are here to stay and this ain't just a black history month thing this is 365 days uh, uh and if it's a leap year 366 i upload videos weekly now you might know i got a movie out come on now watch my movie it's called <laughs> business in the black the rise of black business in america how slaves went to college how, how uh, what races did to destroy black business districts across America. But I got 150 or more black owned businesses from slavery to 8, 1960. I got 13 of them that was owned by slaves. You, you, you follow me? I got 13 of them owned by slaves. And then I wrote a book. My book is called Black Business Book, which has over 200 facts and many of the facts in the movie are in the book, but there's more in the book. So you really need to get both of them. They're uh, available on Amazon. Just put in the name of the film, the name of the book. Might have to put my name in there too. It'll come up or go to my website, Inspirations by Strong, because everything I do is strong. That's what I do. Strong stands for strength, tenacity, resilience, and a sense of oneness, nobility, and grace. That's strong. But without further ado, let me have the gentleman that's on there. He's sitting patiently. He's looking at me. He said, I'm ready to go. I got to go. Let's do it. So, brother, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Um, I am from a little town in Alabama called Norport, Alabama, which you never heard of. Uh, that's why I, I was reared, came up, reared by my uh, grandmother who reared five children, all second, third, four cousins, and uh, uh, we survived it. And out of, the, out of the five children that were reared with no mother and, and no father, just a grandmother, uh, we we all we all finished college. Uh, when, when did you say you get got your doctorate? How did you? When did you get it? And how did you get the doc? How did you get your PhD? Oh yeah, I uh, when I when uh, when I when I came out when I came out of the service, uh, then I decided I wanted to go back to school, and I had uh, uh, six. I had uh, one. I had two years. I mean, I, 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 I had to go back to high school first and, and I spent my two years and I, then I had to go to college and I had to get out in two years and I got out in two years and, and I got, I have a, a doc, doc, doctoral degree and, and business and, and business administration. Unbelievable. Now, now, if I may ask you, when is this? When did you get it? When, you know, what years are we talking about? I, I got in 1960 uh, for, for my doctoral degree. And so, so you grew up in, in Alabama and it was, there was racism all around you, right? Oh, okay. we, you know, when you read in Alabama, racism is everywhere. You, you don't, you don't even know this racism. You mean you you it's 
it's it's a given that it was there, and 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 that time that I came along, no no one uh, tried to to change it, uh, and, and I took that as one of my uh, goals to make sure uh, that that black people live better than I did and had and had more opportunities. So that's what I live for. And all my lifetime to make it to make a difference in yes. my community. Let, let me ask you this: When you're growing up and through high school and stuff, and with racism all around you, is every day? Are, are you fearful every day that maybe I hopefully I don't cross a white person and then they accuse me of something or I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time just because I'm black? And it had all. And you had a had had a law called reckless eyeballing. If you're going down the streets and you and you look and you look at a white woman more than a half a minute, uh, they might put you in jail. You, you never get accustomed to that. You, you gotta make it you, you just gotta make up your mind. Yeah, I'm gonna make it better for the people to follow me. Right. It's not uh how much and you earn is how much you give. Right. Okay. So you 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 let you let it's your it's your you are responsible for some black people having a better day than you have. Did I? Do you um growing up like that? Do you? I, I don't know if this is the right word, but I'm gonna use it anyway. Do you hate white people? No, uh, I don't. I don't. I don't hate white people. Uh, I, w I was taught by my grandmother, and you don't hate nobody. And 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 then she said that you have to feel sorry for them. Oh, really? Right. See, if they if they knew better, they would. They would. They would do better. Did you ever have an occurrence where uh, some white people did some injustice to you through uh, you know your life and or through your educational pursuits? Well, you know, I I I, I'm, I was very fortunate, and then I, I you know everybody have incidents. I mean, yeah, I was very fortunate that none of them was serious. Uh, none of none none of my the kids I was read with, none of them been in jail, none of them never uh, stole anything. Uh, so uh, they 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 live a good life according to some other black people. I mean, you know, you you hear the story all day long, every day, and and black people talk be put in jail for no reason, no nothing. Right? So, so coming from a little town right outside of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Northport, right? And black people, and white people, just did whatever they wanted to do, with it, and they still do it. Some most of the time, sure. And they, and they did whatever, whatever they wanted to do, and nobody said nothing. Nobody said nothing about. It. And then you got, and then you got so accustomed to it at a young age, and you, you thought they were doing the right thing. That's what they're supposed to do. Wow, that's that, that's sad. But you, you know, you you know, you didn't have any other option. You saw it all day long, every day. And the only thing that you could you could do is, is say, "Well, it's not going, it's not going, it's not going, it's not going to happen to me." Uh, so, uh, so I, uh, but that that's got to be that's got to mess with your head, knowing that you got all the ability to do what they're doing. Well, you 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 I, I have I have I do this. If you if you black, uh, you you can't you can't afford to be equal. I mean, I own a marketing firm. And we we compete with, with white people. 
and it's my go it's, it's it's my job, my goal to make them look stupid. I got you. I, I don't care how many how many come along, and I'm more qualified than them. I got you. I mean, I can't. I tell everybody when they work for me that you can't fold me equal. You black. I got you. You got to be better. You, you, you can't rob nobody. You can't steal no steal nothing. You don't do nothing illegal. But your mind is better than that, and you gonna and you gonna make more accomplishment than they did. Yes. Is that is that more pressure on you to feel that way that you got to work that much more harder to be better? No, that's not pressure. That's reality. Now, uh, as, as, you know, knowing that, and I, I guess I'm saying this hopefully, right? Uh, being in Birmingham, you were around with uh, A. G. Gaston. Oh yeah, uh, I was uh, around A. G. Gaston. Uh, I had. Uh, I handled his marketing and advertising for him. And I, I was, I'm the one helping. And we 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 built two banks, and one of them is is still here. And I helped him put those banks together, work with him. And then we we own the same loan and 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 and, and, a, and a bank. No. So, and then, uh, then we 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 set aside X number of dollars to help 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 black business. Yeah. Let me ask you this: Did what a lot of people say that when segregation broke down, that hurt the black business community? Uh, yeah. What's your take on that? Uh, it hurt the black business community. And because they didn't follow up on what they're supposed to do, and nobody can nobody can hurt you if if you got the will to survive. I mean, when I when I came along, uh, 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 black people own uh, all the little stores in the neighborhood. They own the filling station. They own the shoe shine shop. They own all of that. Right. Yeah, Let me yeah. ask you this now. You you saw all of the uh, civil rights marches in Birmingham. Did, oh, yeah. did you help like uh, lend your service to help promote them to get the word out? That kind of thing. I own the, the Birmingham Times newspaper, and, and which was founded in the in the fifties, and that's all. And that's all we did. We re, we reported uh, uh, the news for black people. And, and how and how you survive it, what you need to do, and all that type of stuff. I spent I spent my whole life, and, and, and I'm 96 years old. 96. That's I, beautiful. I'm, I spent my whole life reaching out to black folk, and 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 I made up my mind. I don't care what what they do, what they say. And I'm not gonna stop doing that. Yes. So now, like when uh, what were you were you there when uh, Dr. King got put in jail in Birmingham and that he, kind of thing? He stayed with me. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King stayed at my house on uh, more than more than six times. And then then we I lived in a neighborhood called Dynamite Hill. That's where the black people, if they had more than ten dollars, that's where they live. I got you. Martin Luther King stayed in one of those one, one of those houses, and I put together the, the bonding company. It, it, it gets you out of jail uh, uh, when you went to jail. Yeah. Wow, that was a deep moment there. What did he go to jail for? He was marching or something like that. Do you remember? Yeah, marching. I mean, it's marching up down the street and put you in there. Man, uh, at, a, at a rally, I mean, you have a rally, and they're going to put everybody in there. And everybody had to, had, you know, they had to get out, you had to put, a, put up a bond in order to get them out. And one of, one of Martin Luther King's greatest papers that he wrote 
that he was in jail. Yeah, I remember hearing about it. Right. I mean, that's what I mean. I got it. I, I got all his books. He, he was the nicest, quietest person that you ever seen in your lifetime. Yeah. He, he wasn't afraid of nothing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He, he was he, when you were around when uh, the 16th Street Baptist Church got bombed too, right? I mean, I was going, that's my church. I mean, I was going to, I was going to be there that day at church. Yeah, but my son, older son, went to went to college, went to Morehouse College in Atlanta, and I carried him over there. And, and otherwise, I would I would have been in church that day. And, and, and everywhere, everywhere was where where it was bummed, and, and that's where the kids uh, uh, had, had the Sunday school lesson. My son was in that. And that and that and that class, he would have been down there where where, where the woman was if I if he had not gone to going to college. I could. Whoa, wow! So now, um, throughout your career, you you've done marketing, but you've been on various boards and so on and so forth, um, doing your doing your business and and speaking up for people and spreading the word. Right. I mean, they they don't. They don't, they don't, yeah, the Coca-Cola the company, I was the first black to hire. And when I went in, when I went in the door the next day, I campaigned for hiring black. You see, black people they, they get under the pressure that they want, they, they want to say, I'm the, I'm the only black. Ain't got for one that's me. You ever heard? Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you you know, if you're the only black, and you ain't and, and you're not campaigning and, and for another black, then you shouldn't even, you shouldn't even have a job. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah well, I, some of that's probably because they're scared that if they, uh, you know, the black person to come in and take their job, and there's only so many slots. You hear them stories. I want to. Uh, a golf course, and, and I had some buddies had a meeting one day, and one of them said, "I ain't going out to that golf course to play and make Jesse Lewis rich." And my response was, "You waited too late." And I live, I live in a black neighborhood. I'm gonna die in a black neighborhood. Man, that's beautiful. Now lately you've uh, you've written a book. Let me go back a little bit just right quick here before we come to a close. When you got your PhD, how did you celebrate? Uh, I went uh, I, I, I went home. Uh, my wife was school teacher. If it wasn't for her, uh, I never would have had a PhD. I mean, uh, she. I, I finished the seventh grade. And my wife taught me how to, how, how, how to read. Uh, then, I, then I taught myself how to read faster. Wow. Uh, you can't never, uh, I, you ain't gonna read it. When I, I I'm, going, I'm going to law school when I get to be 100. <laughs> oh my God, that's the way we do it. Well, let me let me go let me go up a little bit. When you started your when you got the job at Coca Cola, how did you celebrate? Uh, you know, I was I was uh, I was so glad to get to get a job, you know, and uh, and what they paid me, I, I got I got I for, I forgot to ask them what they gonna pay. <laughs> I, I didn't care. Yeah. And, and 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 when I when I when I got my check, uh, and it it was, I I thought it was for about a year. I mean, I, I didn't know it for one month. Yeah. I had I had never I had never seen that much money in my yes. life. Yes. Yes. So I, I went I, I went I, I don't I don't I don't drink. Yes. 
Yeah, but I went I went down and, and bought me uh a a, a big bottle of John and Walker Red. <laughs> yes, sir. I drink all of them. Yes, yes. When, when, when you started your company and you got your first client, how did you celebrate? Man, I did the same thing. The only time I ever bought it in a whiskey is, is when I got a new client. And yes. And then the, it made me, uh, uh, it's amazing. The, the client look, was looking for me. Yes. If you, if you got a business, and, and and the clients looking for you, you're doing great. And that's, that's what you tell your daughter. That's what I said. I mean, you got you got to have somebody say, "I want to, I want to hire him." Yes. All right. And the first thing I'm gonna tell him is that you you got to get a PhD. Yes. And you ain't gonna you ain't gonna be no smarter. Right. But you are gonna make more money. Yes. You can't pay. You can't pay someone with a PhD the same price you pay someone with a master. Yes. Let me ask you this: when you when you got uh, when you when you helped in the in the, when Dr. King came to your house the first time, how did that make you feel? Make me good. I mean, and, and, and he he stayed around the, around the corner uh, for me when every time he came to town. And then one time he came to town, and the, the lady he stayed with, he'd been staying with, and he had a packed house. All the children came to town. So she came and asked me what I tell her. I said, I'd be glad. Said, Who wouldn't pick Martin Luther King? I mean, my wife, he, he loved my wife to death. I said, Well, he, he loved her more than he loved me. I said, I guess because she cooked for him. I didn't. <laughs> yes, sir. So, so, uh, I uh, I just I just enjoy enjoy talking to him. It, it's uh, what you learn from a person like Dr. King if I sit down and listen to him. Right? So I, I was honored and I always have been that he stayed in stayed in my stayed in my house and and then all is ninety five percent. Of all them people came from Atlanta to March, stayed somewhere. Yeah, and I had some of them stayed in the building, but 15 of them stayed in the newspaper. I own newspapers. Yeah. They, they slept. They slept in on the press. You know, yeah. all, all, you couldn't take all of them in the house, so they slept on the press. And, and they get up there in March. The next yes. Month. Lastly, when you when you look back at it, if you man, I say. A small town boy from a small town, Alabama, and all that you've accomplished. How do you feel? Uh, I, I feel as though uh, that I have not, I have not done enough for, yeah, for my brother and sister. It's not what you 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 earn; it's what you give. If people do not return the help you you give, no, don't don't stop don't stop doing it. Yes, I mean they 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 they, they the one they the one gonna gonna lose. Right? That's that's what that's what it's all about. I mean, you if you don't if you don't do that, man, you you gonna you gonna lose a whole whole generation. Now, now, what did you say? Now, do you you wrote a book? Do you have a copy of your book to show us one man's opinion? That's right. All right. So, and so, so when you the reason why I, I call it one man's opinion, if I make any mistake, can't nobody say nothing. All right. right. All I can say, yeah, that's my opinion. Yes. It, it, it is a how to a how to book. We from Alabama. One, there's two things we gonna do, and we we gonna have some whiskey, and we gonna feed you. <laughs> there you go. I'm ready. <laughs> we got to drink the whiskey, and we gonna make it available to you, and we gonna feed you. Thank and you we, so much. I, we, we're gonna we're gonna stop there. Um, I appreciate you so much for being on Strong Inspiration. 
Everybody, this is what we do. I got the gentleman on here. You heard his age. I'm not going to repeat it because he's not that old. He's that young. <laughs> Everybody, we're going to get the copy of his book. I thank you so very much. Uh, stay strong. Stay safe. Stay on your grind. God has blessed you. He will continue to bless you. I will see you soon. Everybody, thank you for watching Strong Inspiration. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.